Welcome to Tampa Home Talk with your host, native Tampa real estate girl, Katrina Madewell, a full-time, passionate, out-of-the-box thinker, love for home ownership kind of realtor with over 21 years of combined mortgage and real estate experience. Tune in every week at this time for expert advice on everything you need to know about home ownership, finance, maintaining great credit, building wealth, and making your everyday life better, and how you can be financially successful today and tomorrow. Remember, love where you live or let Katrina fix it. Now, here's your host of Tampa Home Talk, Katrina Madewell. Hi, this is Katrina Madewell with Charles Ruttenberg Realty. You are listening to Tampa Home Talk on Real Estate Radio Network. Thank you so much for joining us today. Really happy to be live in studio with Ricardo Gonzalez with Sabadell United Bank. And he's got some excellent credentials I'm going to share with you here in a few minutes and let him dive into some of the fun things that he does. And um, Sabadell United Bank, first of all, is a very, very, very different bank. And they're not your mom and pop, you know, BOA or um, the the bank with the R and the triangle or some of those different things that you see as you drive down the road. Um, they're, they're based out of Miami initially, and they do a lot of different things with regards to foreign nationals or non-U.S. citizen buyers. They do a lot of things in the jumbo market, which are those higher-end price points for home mortgages. And um, it's, it's interesting. I can't wait to get into some of their product line and talk about some of the stories of the people that they've helped. But <clears throat> Ricardo Gonzalez is a 13-year veteran here in the Tampa Bay banking market, and you work for some big companies like uh, Regions Bank, and you also work for Bank of America, right? Yeah, that is correct, uh, Katrina. Thanks for joining me today. I really am thank excited you. to have you. Thank you for having me. I am very excited to be here and talk about my company. Well, I let's talk about your credentials first, because first of all, I know you, you're very involved in the community. Um, we did a lot of events at um, Greater Tampa Association of Realtors together and put on some great things for the community, the, um, the attorney realtor committee for not only real estate agents, but attorneys within our community. That's a little bit of your background because you have a master's degree, right, in, in international law? It is correct, Katrina. And one of the things about me, I give back to my community. Uh, I am part of the Hispanic uh, Bar Association, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So I do help and uh, participate a lot in their meetings and events. And that is something that has uh, helped me grow as a professional, as a person. So. I am proud of that, and uh, I help people. That's one of uh, one of the things I enjoy to do. So, what prompted you to to make the the switch? How long have you been over there at Savadell United Bank? Well, one of the things is, uh, I, like you say, I was in one of those uh, big banks. Uh, it was more of the same. And so when I have this, when I heard about the Savadell Bank, is hmm, this bank from Spain? I wanna I wanna know more about this bank. Well. Sabadell United and, and Bank. And that's where they originally started was in Spain? That is correct. Sabadell United Bank is a United States corporation. We are the fifth largest bank in Florida with over 40,000 clients. Uh, we are a subsidiary of Banco Sabadell, uh, which is one of the oldest banks in Europe and one of the most successful banks. And uh, we operate out of uh, our headquarters in Miami, Florida, like you mentioned. I know you have a little branch office here in the uh, the Tampa market. We do. We in do downtown. Have, we do have a office in downtown. We do both banking and uh, lending from that office. And our idea is in the near future is to expand in this area. That makes sense. And what is your what is your target? How many branches did you guys want to have in the Florida market? Well, that's hard to say. Right now, in the, in the Florida market, we have over thirty branches, uh, uh, mostly in South Tampa in. South, South Florida. Florida, yeah. But uh, hopefully we will have a more present here in the Tampa Bay area. So um, it's it's interesting because I love when we run across banks like this, and I, we were talking about some of the stories of the clients that you guys serve. And I think it's, like you say, if it's the right client, you guys are the right bank. It's correct. It's going like banking 101, uh, going back to our roots where I started banking. It was more personal, mm -hmm. knowing your client knowing their needs. Uh, it's not just uh, sell a product, sell a rate. It is just understanding what the customer needs and customize that loan for him or her. And I know you guys, you're not the right bank for every client. Well, so let's talk about who your client is. Like, who's your ideal client? Like, who's a very good match for Sabadell United Bank? Well, our clients are, Katrina, everybody that is looking to buy a new house. 
buy a vacation, vacation home, refinance it. And, and the Florida market would do a lot of second homes. Correct. A vacation home, uh, new homes or first home buyers, um, uh, secondary homes or vacation homes. Then we do the refinance. We can refinance existing homes. And also we can uh, do construction uh, loans for people to build their dream homes as well. So let's talk about some of those things in, in detail. First of all, I know that um, one of the niches that you guys have is certainly financing a property for a non-U.S. citizen. Correct. Uh, that so, is, so this may even be Canadians or technically considered non-U.S. citizens or correct. Canadians. Uh, we consider everybody that doesn't have a green card or a U.S. citizen. Uh, the, we do mortgage for international clients that would be non-U.S. citizens. And we've had a lot of different people moving here from, you know, from, from Russia, from Europe. We get a lot of U.K. people that vacation here. We have Disney so close, and our beaches are awesome. Our weather's fabulous. So we're seeing a lot of these people that have come over for vacation that love it, and they want to buy a second home here, whether that's a, a condo or a home. That is correct. It doesn't have they don't necessarily have to move here or live here, but they have to make this home as their primary home here in the United States. Uh, in Florida, of course. So let's talk about some of those things. Let's talk about why, for example, how can Sabadell Bank do a loan or a transaction for someone that, say, is from the U.K. or they're from Canada where another bank is, is not going to touch that or they don't want to do it, they don't understand the dynamics? Well, I would say, first of all, Katrina, our bank or headquarters are in Miami, Florida. We are very used to the international market. Also, most of the big banks, uh, they don't understand how to underwrite the loans for international customers. They see that as a big risk. Uh, for us, we have our minimum requirements, but if that person meets those minimum requirements, we will definitely you know, consider to extend a loan to that uh, individual. So, so what are your, some of your minimum requirements? Well, some of the things and we I already mentioned to you is they have to be a first home, uh, for them, and it have to be in Florida. So like a primary residence? It would have to be the primary resident. resident. In other words, it cannot be an investment home right. uh, for that person. Uh, so they don't want to rent it out. They're intending to occupy it in some fashion or another. You just say the word. They intend to occupy their, that property, and we will consider that as their primary resident here in, in the United States and in the state of Florida. And so let's talk more about that. So what... What are some of the reasons why another bank doesn't finance a buyer like that where you guys do? Well, like I say, it's, uh, it's the risk factor, and also it is the um, uh, ability for those banks to collect uh, the information from those customers. Right. Uh, like you're saying, these customers and come from Canada, South America, the U.K., Europe, uh, they, can, they don't have the normal uh, paperwork banks require, the W-2s, the 1099s, they can pull a credit score. Right. So in Sabadell, we have established uh, a procedure that we can uh, see what those customers have if they qualify for those loans. So you guys are set up to pull like international credit reports. Th there is not such a thing as an international credit report. However, we look at the assets. We look at their uh, what they have in other countries. There is some uh, there is some you know paperwork that we will require for those customers. And one of the things is important uh, for us, for those type of loans, we require 40% <coughs> down. Uh, so the minimum LTV, and we can talk about that, the loan-to-value is going to be 60% for those, for those properties. So, I mean, that makes sense because it's obviously a higher-risk type loan. You have to collect documentation that are – it's usually currency in a different – um, denomination other than the U.S. dollar. It is correct. But again, we have a team that is used to that, deals with that. We have underwriters that have experience dealing with those type of individuals. So that's why we can make that a lot easier than in other banks. That's one of the reasons you asked me why other banks don't do those type of products because they really don't have the uh, resources or they don't have the understanding to how to the, do the means loans. to do it like you say you have to be able to convert the currency and that type of stuff it is correct you have to understand uh, those uh, how those uh, countries work in in order to translate that into the United States into our financial world gotcha um, some of the other things that I know you guys are doing too is you're very competitive in the jumbo market that is one of our niche. Uh, that is one of our speciality. We do have... Now, when I say jumbo market, I want to break that down, too. 
So in the in the real estate world, when we say jumbo, um, what we mean by that is if you're getting a mortgage that is the dollar amount for that mortgage is going to exceed the Fannie Mae guidelines, which is what is it, forty four hundred right seventeen thousand? Right now, everything that is above uh, four hundred and seventeen thousand, it is considered in the Tampa Bay area jumbo loan. Okay. Uh, those loans, uh, the way them Sabadell treated, and I will explain, is uh, we treated that as a portfolio loan meaning then the bank keeps that loan for the rest of the loan. We don't go out and sell the You're loan. You're not selling anymore. it to the secondary servicer where the payments change and it that is, type of stuff. It is correct. The, the, the customer start with Sabadell, they start the loan with Sabadell, and they end that loan with Sabadell. We will keep that loan for the rest, for the term of the, the loan. the duration of the For the okay. duration of the loan, correct. Which is all about the banking relationship, going back to what you talked about in the beginning. It is all about banking relationship, having the right person, having the right customer, and doing the right thing for them, and, and the, the product and better feed their needs. So, um, and the other thing, too, is I know that you and I have talked about this, too. Like, it doesn't, you guys like the lower loan to values, meaning you like some more money or skin in the game. But you will finance a property that... Um, you know, the the banks can like the condition that the bank would normally want it in to go conventional or even jumbo for that matter. They they want the house to be what they consider habitable, meaning you can't have a leaky roof. You can't have, you know, broken windows and termites eating the floors as as such of a property I have now. But you guys, so what you're you're doing those type of loans, right? Where you allow people to get money for the construction, or how does that work? Well, like I say, we can do either a construction loan, or if the loan <clears throat> fit the jumbo um, guidelines, we can definitely, if with the right loan to value, we can go ahead and finance that property for that for that individual for that individual. So, what type of guidelines are you guys looking for when you talk about the jumbo market? Like, what sort of things? Are you looking to be in place for the clients? Well, for the jumbo market, Katrina, we are looking at somebody with a um, good credit score. There is, uh, in general, there are three things that we look when we are uh, considered to do a loan for a person. It is what is called the loan to value, LTV. We talk about that. It is, uh, we look at the DTI, or debt to income, and we also look at the credit score. And based on those uh, three criteria and the person's uh, ability to repay the loan, that's where we uh, have our, our, you know, guidelines, say, it to... Where you can be a little bit more flexible. Correct. Depending on the strength of that individual, we can be a little bit more flexible in, in, in a particular loan. Gotcha. I know we've seen times where people have a ton of cash in the bank, but they don't want to spend it. You know, they want to stay liquid. We we usually see that. Uh, we now in the Tampa Bay market, we see people buying cash. Mm-hmm. And because that's what uh, they were told to do. And uh, just, uh, I like numbers. So let's say you have a million dollar property and you're going to pay a million dollar in cash. Uh, you know, as a realtor, as a banker, we should advise those people and how to very leverage their money, their funds. Uh, to leverage it, spread it out, take advantage of. I mean, correct. money's cheap right now. It, it's, it is correct. Uh, if that person can put 50% down, uh, again, my example of a million dollars, if they can put 50% down, half a million dollars, and finance the rest in a, with a fixed rate or adjustable rate, whatever fit their criteria, uh, a very low rate, that, that is a win win situation for, for that person. And I know some of the variety of products you guys have really set you apart from the average bank and and there's a lot of different like I know a lot of times they say oh they'll have all these products but when you start getting into the jumbo um, category or that jumbo box and start having the conversation of what kind of what kind of loan products the bank actually has for jumbo I would say most of them have just a handful right like less than five products you are absolutely right Katrina Uh, most banks advertise themselves to to be to be in the jumbo market but when you talk to them, they really have one or two products available. Oh, so it's not even five. I'm giving them more credit. <laughs> I think. I mean, it's only one, two, or three products that they can do. 
Um, you know, here uh, at Sabadell, we can do adjustable rates. Uh, we can do... We're, I want to dive into some of the different products that you offer, and I know there's a lot of them. We have to take a, a real quick break here on Tampa Home Talk. You're listening to Katrina Madewell. I'm your host of Tampa Home Talk with Charles Ruttenberg Realty on Real Estate Radio Network. We're going to take a very quick break. We come back in a minute. We're going to talk to Ricardo Gonzalez with Sabadell Bank, get into some of the different products they have because there are a ton of them. So you jumbo money listeners out there, instead of put, tying all your cash up into a property, stick around because you'll want to hear what he has to say next. Back in a moment. Welcome back to Tampa Home Talk. Thanks for joining us this Thursday afternoon on your drive home on Tan Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell of Tampa Home Talk, and you'll find us here every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. We're part of the Real Estate Radio Network, and we would love to have you. Next week's show, we're going to have Andy Feinberg talking about some of his picks and things for his investors and what kind of advice he gives as far as how to diversify and just a wonderful, wonderful conversation around that type of stuff. In studio today, we have Ricardo Gonzalez with Sabadell United Bank. And if you missed any part of today's show, you'll definitely want to catch it out on a podcast. We also post them to our website, Facebook and Twitter. So just search us across the web at Tampa Home Talk. Uh, Thank you again very much for joining me today, Ricardo. Thank you, Katrina. Thank you for having me here. <clears throat> Sabadell Bank is a very um, niched bank, and we talked about some of the details in the earlier part of the show. So if you missed any of it, definitely catch up. But to give you a real quick recap, if you're just joining us in the car, we were talking about how you guys do a lot of um, your niche is the um, foreign buyer, the people that don't have U.S. credit. They don't have U.S. income as far as dollars. You know, they may be Canadian or from the U.K., and you guys are actually – lending them money to buy a property here so they don't have to pay cash. That is correct, Katrina. Most of those people uh, have the idea that they have to bring cash here to the United States to buy their, their property. And and the fact is then there are banks like, like mine that help those people to finance uh, most of their property. Like we talk is going to be based on their LTV, uh, the maximum LTV. So you loan to value how much you're putting down. It's going to be 60% for, for those properties. However, so 40% down. 40% down, we will go max at 60% loan to value. But it's a benefit because they don't have to put all the money, all the cash. Uh, they don't have to pay the property in cash. They can finance part of that. Right. And you also do a lot of different things in the jumbo market. And we were talking about that before the break. So we we're talking about how the average bank only has maybe one, two, or three loan products for their jumbo clients. So people that, you know, need to get a loan or mortgage above 417000 it is correct, Katrina. Uh, like we say, f- above four hundred seventeen seventeen thousand uh, dollars, most banks have two or three products. Uh, here at Sabadell, we offer uh, ARM products. Uh, those products so adjustable are- rate mortgages. And, and let's talk about that for a second, because I think adjustable rate mortgages kind of get a little bit of a, a bad rap over time, and and people are concerned because they adjust. But let's let's talk about some of the benefits to an adjustable rate mortgage before we dive into the programs. Okay, well, to, to talk a little bit about the products we have, we have what is called the 5-1 arm, uh, 30 years amortization. We have the 7-1 arm and the 10-1 arm. And the benefit of those is uh, your payment is going to be lower. Well, what that means, first of all, let's explain that. It's When you say 5-1, 7-1, 10-1 arm, that means essentially that for that first introductory period, whether it's 5 years, 7 years, 10 years, um, your interest rate is going to be fixed going into that. That is correct, Katrina. The, the 5-1-R, 7-1-R, and 10-1-R, it guarantees you that interest rate for the first 5, 7, or 10 years, depending on what product you choose. And after that, the the the, the rate is going to adjust depending on the market, the, the way the market right. moves. And you guys, what indexes? You said you're using a lot of stuff on LIBOR. We use uh, we use LIBOR for on the index. Correct. Which LIBOR is a pretty good index if you look at it over the long haul. It's a very stable, slow moving index. And then your, your margins are low too. And I'll I want to just chime in on why that's important if you have an adjustable rate mortgage because the the way it happens is if you have a five year or a five one arm for the first five years, it's going to be fixed. But after that, let's say 
you haven't quite paid off the house or it's not, you know, you have to be in the house for a year or two longer than the initial five years you thought you might be there. So essentially your margins are low. So that means when they do the adjustment, it's going to take the, the index, which is London Interbank Offer Rate LIBOR. And they're going to add that to that low margin to calculate what the new rate's going to be. That is correct, Katrina. And also, I mean, it's going to depend on the market. It depends on the market move. Uh, it could, the rate can go down as well as it can go up. Correct. We really don't know that. It depends on what the market is going to do at that particular time. So let's say, worst case scenario, someone bought a home. You know, it's a jungle, jumbo mortgage, so they say they have a half a million dollar mortgage. And they've paid down some of it, but they've been in there five years, and now they have to adjust, and the rates are at 15%. So I think a lot of people have a misconception that their rate's going to move, you know, to 15%. Well, it's always going to be a cap there where, you know, the rates, uh, the bank is going to, you know, we can adjust the rate to that cap we have for that particular uh, for that particular loan. And it's going to be, usually the cap doesn't jump with the rate, like you're saying, at 50%. It doesn't go to what the rate is right, right now. So if you're starting out 3 4 5%, whatever it is, not even talking about APR, but whatever that number is, your initial caps are, what, 2% from it, wherever it starts? It, it depends. It depends on the loan, but, uh, you know, it could be, we could have a max of 5 6% of a cap. Gotcha. And that's total lifetime cap over the whole life of the mortgage. It is correct. Gotcha. So there, there's caps, and, you know, one of the benefits to those products, I think, is if people get paid, um, like, for example, attorneys. We used this example at lunch the other day. A lot of them get paid on a um, contingency basis, and they don't get paid until they actually help their clients win the lawsuit or whatever they're trying to do. So they'll get paid in chunks, kind of like in real estate. We get paid in chunks after everyone's happy, and we've done all the work that goes into the transaction to get it to the close of escrow. Only then do we get paid based on the commission we've earned. But at that point, it gives someone the opportunity to pay down extra on that principal. And then when it adjusts, they're going to recast that payment based on the lower mortgage amount. It is correct. So, Katrina, not all the individuals are the same. Uh, these, loans are, these loans are not for everybody. Right. But if you are that person, then get an annual bonus or you are pays on commission base, this will be a good product for you because it gives you the ability to have a loan payment. Uh, for the five, seven, or ten years. It's going to be a little lower than what the standard 30-year fix would be, right? It, it is correct. It's going to be a lower to what the 15 uh, or 30 years uh, fixed rate will be, and but also it gives you the ability to, when you make the bonus or that extra, extra, extra cash, then you can apply that to the principal of the loan. Gotcha. It's, it's interesting because, you know, when you look at the cost to refinance a half-million-dollar property, it's not cheap. Correct. So if you think you may want to pay it down or recast that payment, just that um, feature alone may be worth it for you to take an adjustable. Well, also, Katrina, we have to keep in mind uh, this, uh, the average American uh, stay in their house less than 10 years. Right. So Five even, to seven years is that average. Correct. And that's not saying by you or, or me. That's saying by, you know, the experts. So when people buy that home thinking, well, I'm going to be here, this is going to be my home for the next uh, 30 years. Mm -hmm, then, forever. Correct. For the forever home, then they find out and they're going to sell that home and move to somewhere else. So, again, this will be a good product if you have that. If that is in your plans, it will be a really good product for you as well. And stuff happens. You know, life happens. People, you know, all their kids grow up, move out of the house for empty nesters, and they look around and go, Wow. This house is a little bit too big for us. I think we're going to buy a little smaller place closer to the beach. <laughs> Correct. But also, we have, for those people that say, no, Ricardo, Katrina, this is going to be my forever home, we do have that product, and it's the 15-15 or the 30-30, meaning the 15 years with the 15 uh, um, the years amortization. Or it's the a 30. straight, normal 15-year loan. It is a straight, fixed loan for the, for the 15 years or the 30 years, whatever they, they choose or they pick. And your rates are really good. I mean, I know you have your standard rates that you guys publish, but if you really like a client, a lot of times you guys can take exception to that stuff. Our rates are very competitive. Uh, our our philosophy is like we're not going to lose a client for rates. Saying that, like you're saying, is have to be the right customer, the right person. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, our rates are very competitive in this market. It's interesting. So what other type of products do you guys have, like from – from that perspective, like what things are you doing differently? Well, the things that we're doing differently is we, we look at the holistic approach. 
when uh, people are buying that uh, the dream home, we look not only at uh, their assets, but also you know what kind of uh, business they are and how are they going to repay the loan to us. So we use, again, different factors that, m that make the bank determine how to help a person to, to, to get the, the best loan for them. So you guys are looking at it really from a common sense type place. And so what about if someone had a, a business where a lot of their income was cash, but you could see it flowing through the bank statements? Would that be something you guys would consider? Well, that's something that, you know, we can definitely, you know, take it to the underwriters and they, they will make the determination. But, you know, that, that will be something that we would not say no to a person, you know, without looking into, you know, their financials. But you guys would definitely go to bat and try to pull out all those compensating factors. We will. We will. We will take a, a, a very close look of that individual and, and trying to do the, the best for them. So. So one of the other things that I want to talk about when we come back from the break in just a second are the fees, because I think all banks are not created equal. And a lot of times some of the bank fees can be significantly different from one bank to the next. Uh, you're listening to Tampa Home Talk. This is your host, Katrina Madewell. In studio today, we have Ricardo Gonzalez with Sabadell United Bank. We're going to be back in just a minute to pick up this conversation where we left off with fees, cost appraisals, and kind of wrap up our closing thoughts. If you'd like to call in, our studio number here is 727-441-3000. If you're listening on vacation and you got a question for Ricardo, give us a shout. 727-441-3000. Be back in just a minute. Welcome back. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us this afternoon for Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell, and you can find me here every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. And the goal of our show here at Tampa Home Talk is just to help you keep and maintain great credit, live within your means, and help you build wealth. And every week we bring in some, some great guests to share in some of the everyday things that we see in the market and across the board and just different ways that we can help you. In studio today we have Ricardo Gonzalez with Sabadell United Bank. In the earlier part of the show, we talked about some of the different things that set their bank apart from the banks that you see on every corner. And they very much cater to the international market. They do a lot of things for buyers that are non-U.S. citizens that um, we were talking on the break that pay cash. Like, and, and you said a lot of times they, you see, you're, what you're seeing, Ricardo, is they will get a loan from the bank in their country, wherever they're from, because they obviously won't lend on a property here. That is correct, Katrina. And that's something that we should educate our, our, our realtors, um, our, our customers, our clients, uh, those, those potential buyers are, we see a lot of cash transactions here in Florida, thinking that those people are, they're paying cash. When in reality, most of those uh, prospects or clients are you know, borrowing that, that money in their country to pay for the property here uh, just because they don't realize they don't have the knowledge then their banks like myself my like my bank or bankers like myself then they can help them with that and I think that's it like you said it's a huge part of it for myself as an agent to really just educate our clients and you know it's one of those things that we probably should ask a little bit more you know we have somebody visiting here from another country and they want to buy a house, and we usually ask them, hey, are, are you paying cash, or are you going to be, you know, are you already pre-approved for a loan? Correct. It's when you ask a question, just remember to ask three more questions, so that way you can know more about that person, and see, I, I know that you're telling me that you're paying cash. Is this something that you are planning to get this cash from, from your country, from your home country, to bring here and pay for the property cash, or is something that, you know, you just have the cash, and you just want to pay for this property? Right. And I know a lot of times people do actually, like you say, borrow the money to pay cash. And it's it's interesting because the terms that you offer here, which I wouldn't even think about that, but you raised a good point that your terms and your conditions and the rates and, and just the whole philosophy in which you borrow money is, is completely different than likely where they're getting, wherever they're from. It is correct. It is correct. Our terms and, and rates are not going to be that much different than the regular uh 
rates and terms for a U.S. citizen. So they will get the benefits of that, good good rates, good terms, and, and, and again, they're, they're going to be... Now, the interest rates in which people borrow money on their, on their homes or wherever they're borrowing it from their home, home country is likely a lot more than we're seeing here. For, for what I heard from, from the realtors and, and the people I've been spoken with, uh, interest rate in those countries are, are a lot higher than what we can offer here in, in, the Uni- you know, in, our, in Florida in the United States. And then trying to get those banks or those financial institutions to actually lend here is like, it's not going to happen. Correct. I mean, if they go to a regular bank, that's going to be something really hard for get to. The, again, we say they don't have the means. They don't have the capacity. They don't have the people to understand those kind of loans. So having a, a banker like myself, having a bank like, like ours, that would make their life a lot easier when, you know, when they want to finance a property. So let's talk about, I know at the beginning of the show, we started off talking about the the banking relationship. And if you miss any part of today's show or you're, you're hopping in and out of the car, I would strongly like to encourage you to chime in for a um, for the whole show in its entirety because we talked about a number of different things that you'll want to recap and listen to the whole thing. But we, we talked about banking relationship, and I think that's something that a lot of the big box banks have gotten away from over the years and it's interesting because you you have a lot of portfolio products like it doesn't have to be sellable in the secondary market for you guys to do the loan because you're actually lending your own money correct you're a very strong bank financially it is correct katrina we want to be that uh, that person's uh, bank we want to be their banker saying that for those products we require that person to have their checking account hopefully the whole relationship with us that way, when we do this portfolio loan, we can take the loan payments out of that, you know, account they have with us. And you guys are making that easy for them. So if they wanted to, for example, open, you know, their business account there, you guys are making the de- deposits and that type of stuff seamless for them. We make that very simple for them. With with the technology uh, of, of this 21st century, uh, people actually, they don't have to go to their banks anymore. They can handle their bank operations from their homes, their computers. They can make their deposits through a little machine. So banking is, is we make the banking very simple for them. We've definitely, the, the laws and the rules of banking have certainly changed over the last several years with the mobile deposits. I mean, people literally snap a picture of a check with their cell phone and they can deposit it into their, their bank. It is correct, Katrina. I mean, uh, I remember when I did it the first time, my mom say, what are you doing? And I say, I am making a deposit. I took the check, took my phone, took a picture, and I say, Don, and she's like, you're, you're kidding me, right? And I say, no, 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 the deposit has been made. The money is, is in the account. Did she think you were playing a joke on her? She thought I was playing the biggest joke. She said, it's like, you're right, you know, and I say, Mom, the deposit has been made. This is, you know, the money is in the account already, so... We just, uh, we were actually, we were having uh, lunch that day and I put the check in my pocket, my phone in the other pocket and I say, we don't have to worry about this, money's in the bank. So no more rushing to the bank before five, you literally just pop it in from wherever you're at. Well, and that's where most people, Katrina, you, you and I talk about this, technology is a big part of us right now. People love technology nowadays. Saying that we still... It's made our lives convenient and easy. I mean, why wouldn't they, you know? It is. Saying that we still have that personal touch. Uh, right. We do have a uh, press in an office, but uh, we 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 take the most clients are busy. Uh, they're doing their own business, and they rather do things, uh, you know, at, at their time, at their convenience. So right. So let's talk on about the appraisal process because I know that you guys are doing stuff different with regards to, you know, international buyers that are non-U.S. citizens and jumbo money for stuff that's over four hundred seventeen thousand. What's the appraisal process like with with your bank? Well, what we do is every time a person uh, want to finance a, a property of, of that type, uh, it will have to go through the appraisal process. Uh, the bank has qualified appraisals, and we will send those to the property. Then they send the result to us, and based on that, we will, based on their results, we will calculate the loan-to-value for that loan. And we were talking about this. You said that your appraisers are carefully selected because I think when you start talking about the jumbo market in the higher end estate type homes they're really not like the regular type home I and mean, there's a lot of details a lot of specifics the quality of construction is different there's a number of things that makes that home different and the the appraiser should 
know what those differences are. It is correct. We use a specialist for those products, Katrina, and uh, and uh, basically the client are gonna get uh, you know a, a good value for for that appraisal. And so there, how many comps usually do you see on your appraisal report? Is there three? Are they putting more in there? Well, it depends. You know, that's 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 a, that's something that you know they handle in the depends back. on the property. Depends on the property, correct? But but again, that people are going to be like you say, you're going to have a group of specialists then deal with those type of properties. So it, it's going to be a, a fair fair value for. So if you guys are doing jumbo loans and you're doing loans for non citizen citizen buyers and different things that other banks are not doing, your fees must be high, right? Well, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, that's you brought a good point. Uh, we are a bank of relationship. Uh, we want to bank that person, that individual. We want to be their primary bank. Uh, we want to serve all their needs. Uh, saying that our fees are very competitive, very low, uh, f- you know. So would the fees, like the bank fees for a property that is a mortgage, say it's a half a million dollars, or a property that's a million dollars, are your fees going to be the same from one transaction to the next our bank fees uh the what we charge is going to be you know is we're going to have uh, a set fees just for the paperwork and uh for the, for applying to the loan the rest is going to be the regular fees and people have to buy pays doc stamps well you can't change uncle tam's fees and you can't change the title insurance those are <clears throat> those are mandated by the state it is correct, Katrina. You and I talk about that. There are going to be fees that we are not going to be able to control. Uh, the fee as a bank that we are going to charge is a flat fee for the application, and it's going to be a very low fee for those. What fees. is your application fee? As of today, today mm-hmm. or application As of right fee, now, yeah. As of right now, it is $775. That's pretty it. good, and that's everything. You don't have any <laughs> other additional fees on that, like underwriting fees or? Uh, again, those are going to be our bank fees. The rest are going to be the, the normal just fees. Just any fees you'd have with any bank. <laughs> it is correct, and you just mentioned. So it's, I love your background, too, because you come from an interesting place. You were a business banker with regions is that right yeah, that is correct and then you also did wealth management with bank of america that is correct and so who were some of the clients like what type of um what's the difference in the transactions that you did there compared to the things you can do now very similar transactions uh, we're talking about you know wealthy individual business owners uh, bc bcp bc bc people they are yep <clears throat> and it's been my experience too the more we can do to help clients like that, the more value we are to them, and that's what we strive to do. Correct, and I think then that's why we dif- differentiate from other banks. Uh, we have the expertise I've been dealing with in this market uh, with those individuals for 13 years, and uh, that makes uh, my job and their job easier when they're talking to me to understand their needs. It's not a be about selling a product or selling a rate. It's understanding what they need and what they're trying to accomplish. Is that some of the things that you experienced maybe with the other banks? Yeah, it is. Uh, <clears throat> in other banks, things are not simple right. uh, anymore. They're getting too big for their own good. Uh, still, with Sabadell, we have uh, control of, uh, of what we do. We have a direct line with our underwriters, with the processors. Uh, they're just a fun, you know, people in the headquartered office in Miami, so... And how long has their office been there in Miami? Because I know you said they come from a long line and they're from Spain. And we we've been in uh, in the state of Florida since uh, since the eighties. Oh uh, wow! Yeah, Sabadell Sabadell United Bank is was uh, is uh, the result of a merge of uh, four four banks. So it is. We are a very strong bank. Like I say, we're the fifth largest bank in Florida with over forty thousand clients. That's interesting. That you're just so big with such a niche type yeah you know who your clients are you guys really know exactly who they are and that's who you're going after. and and that's why we understand our market Uh, again we we serve uh, the the jumbo loans community let's call it that way the international clients and uh, and we like to stay in that i think that is that is really our expertise i love the fact that we can open up some more options for our buyers that are here from other markets and other countries and Instead of, you know, letting them use their cash, just offering them an additional 
alternative to paying cash. They can, and then you know, instead of buying one home, they may want to buy two. And and also, Katrina, something that you and I have not mentioned, uh, <clears throat> even for uh, U.S. Uh, residents, even for people who already live here and they want to move to Florida uh, because of the weather, because we are now the, the third larger state, you know. I think after the winter that a lot of the uh, Northeast and the rest of the country has had, I think we'll get a lot of people that move here full time. Correct. And we have those people that are, you know, retirees or people that are planning to retire. They're going to sell their home uh, north and they want to move here to Florida. And they really don't. They probably want a nice house because they might have to spend more time at home, but they don't want to pay in cash. They don't want to really, you know, spend all their cash in a house. It's under, you know, I understand that. I will not advise someone to do that. So, you know, they can put it with us easily 50, 60 percent down and still buy a, a, a large home and, and finance the rest. And that's, I think, where my bank and my institution uh, has uh, – as an edge, we, we really have a, you know, can benefit that person for that. And so tell me some of the stories of the people that, that you've helped, like that maybe they went to another bank and they had whatever type of experience and then they connect with you guys and you get the transaction done. Well, Who are some of those people? Some of the stories we have, Katrina, are, you know, we have a person, uh, you know, from Canada, then he was buying a property here, then, you know, the, the realtor thought it was going to be a cash deal where really he was financing that with his bank in, in Canada. So and he's already um, basically getting a loan there to pay cash here. It is correct. They're saying, you know, I'm, you know, I'm paying cash here. I'm getting my loan in Canada. And when the realtor was telling me the interest rate and the terms that person was getting in Canada, it was going to be three times what we could do the here for for him. And really, that person have no idea that, you know, he can he can do that. He was doing that thinking that no one was going to be able to help him here. So when you're talking about, for example, a half a million dollars, you know, how much does that equate to dollar wise? Did you guys do the numbers on that? Well, we can do the numbers. Definitely, we can do the numbers uh, with the clients. But again, every case is going to be different. It's going to be based on you know, their own finances, their personal financial statements, their assets. So ev every case, again, is going to be a little bit different, but it's going to be a lot more competitive than what they can get, you know, somewhere else. And you guys, you not only do the foreign national stuff, but you also like, you know, the doctors, the attorneys, the people that have the potential to repay, but for whatever reason, you know, maybe income fluctuates or it's a little lower or maybe they're out of med school. Is that a good match for your bank? It is correct. It is correct. Uh, one of the things we specialize is in attorneys. Uh, we understand uh, the, how attorneys work. We understand their cash flow. We understand how they get paid. And, and we do a lot of loans for them. That's, that's one of the, our niche for, for our bank. And so you guys, you're looking at their track record over the last couple of years? Or are you looking at business plans too? We look, uh, we, we look at uh, everything they do in their office. Uh, depending on what kind of law they practice, what kind of uh, cases they bring, and depending on that, we can you know we can be very flexible in what we can offer them. And so, attorneys are a big part of your your business. How about and you, you also do a lot of loans for physicians? We do. We do a lot of loans for doctors, attorneys, and and business uh, business professionals in general. Business, like business owners. owners, correct. Because again, business owners, business uh, can fluctuate. They can get, they have some months and they have an incredible month, a lot of sales, but they could be another month and they have to buy inventory for their business. So the cash flow is going to be low for that month. Yeah, we experience the same thing on, on our end. You know, we may have a lot of properties on the market and we may have a lot of output because we have to market those properties and get them to move. It is correct. And so. Tell me a little bit more about your company and some of the people. I got to meet a few of them when we were at your office, but who, who's some of your support team and your staff? Well, you know, we have, we have incredible staff. Uh, our, our, our executive here, her name is Susan Blackburn. Uh, she comes, from, again, from a bigger corporation, bigger bank here in the state of Florida, and she basically handpicked her team. Uh, we and we have, invited Susan in today. She couldn't make it with us, but maybe another time she'll make it Unfortunately, unfortunately, Susan will have, wasn't, wasn't being able to be here, but she was eager to be here. Uh, but uh, what she does is she handpicks her bankers, and 
and and the whole team uh, the person who has less experience uh, in the office has been in banking for eight seven seven eight years Wow so we are all uh, experienced experienced bankers uh, we've been in big banks and we appreciate the one-on-one the personal touch uh, doing things different and that's that's why we're here that's why we're different and you know with your agree with your degree being in law it's interesting, and I, I saw this on the Realtor Attorney Committee, you can really relate to a lot of those individuals. And Now, did you think when you got out of school you were going to be an attorney? Was that your thought? No, that was not my thought. I, was, uh, I, was, I always liked banking. I love financing, so I, I like what I do. And it helped me because I understand. It helped me speak their language. Gotcha. It helped me understand uh, what they're going. They work hard, and they want somebody to work hard for them too. So they, they appreciate that. It's and it's it's a different animal and, and we see all different types. I mean, we've had a lot of different attorneys here on my show that we've brought in with their expertise. I mean, we had Darren Mish in the studio before. He does a lot of stuff with people that have IRS issues and just a number of just awesome attorneys that have a whole wealth of experience to bring to the table. And, the, and I'm so glad that we have those shows available via podcast because I know that I've taken the past shows we have on Tampa Home Talk and we talked about something that was you know, related to whatever the conversation is I'm having with a client. And I push that podcast over for them to listen. And we usually hear back, wow, thank you. That was such great information. And your guest was awesome. Well, and to say this, Katrina, I mean, most people, I mean, if they have, they, some people don't really make the move. They might want to move to a bigger house. They want the dream home, but they think how I'm going to get that. Uh, you know, how can I, you know, what products are available for me? It's, it's, it's a market when they go to their where they go to their normal bank and say I want a home for you know uh, six seven hundred thousand people say whoa you know I, we you know let me let me get in touch with someone and see That's how a lot we're gonna, of our portfolio <laughs> that is correct how we're going to handle that so we do that every day so for us it's not going to be a surprise uh, for us it's going to be taking care of them like we say people are busy they want a professional and take care of their needs and that's what we're here for i really have enjoyed our time today i'm so glad that you had a chance to come in and join us have ricardo gonzalez with sabadell united bank and um this saturday on tampa home talk we're going to have andy feinberg he's going to be joining us to go over some different types of investments and we had a very uh, fun conversation that we're going to go over about Tesla and why they don't like that stock and how unique that company is and kind of where they're going. But if you missed any part of today's show here, Tampa Home Talk, feel free to catch us on the web at tampahometalk.com. We're also in on Facebook and Twitter and across the web at Tampa Home Talk. And every single one of our shows are available via podcast. And we'll be here every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. Our studio call-in lines, if you have any real quick last-minute questions for Ricardo, 727-441-3000. Again, our our studio call-in line here, 727-441-3000. So give us a shout, and we'll be happy to answer those questions. All right. Well, Katrina, thank you so much for having me and giving the opportunity to talk about myself and my bank. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, take uh, my information. It's in your website. So I'm going to be able to answer any questions uh, your listeners will have. So. We certainly do. And if you if you can't call us today at the 727-441-3000, feel free to catch us at TampaHomeTalk.com. And we will post Ricardo's show card, his announcement card, with all his contact information. His phone number and his email will be on there, so you'll be able to catch him. And he'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Or if you're listening and maybe you just want to run a scenario by him. Yep. You're thinking, hey, this is this is my situation. I'm not quite sure if it would apply to me, but this is what I have going on. This is the house I want to buy. You can certainly have that conversation with them. I right? would love to help them. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Katrina. Oh, you're welcome. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk, and this is your host, Katrina Madewell, with Charles Rettenberg Realty on Real Estate Radio Network. Thank you so much for joining us this Thursday afternoon, and we'll be back this Saturday at 5, as well as every Thursday and Saturday at 5 o'clock. So, don't forget to catch us on the web at tampahometalk.com and catch all of our past shows on a podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be back on Saturday with Andy Feinberg. So much for that. Today, we are out. <laughs>